time in more than a year today, Iran and world powers sat down at the bargaining table to discuss Tehran's nuclear ambitions. And that's the perfect backdrop for our series this week, The Forbidden Zone, investing in Iran. Now, we got started on this for two reasons. A billionaire contacted us about American companies doing business in Iran, and a U.S. investor who traveled to Tehran told me he's eager to invest in stocks there. Well, we're a curious team, and we wanted to know why people think investing is Iran, in Iran is worth it. So we looked into these tips, and we found this. Iran matters big time for big money. It's got the third largest reserves of oil, the second largest reserves of natural gas in the world, and 58% of the population is under the age of 30. We call that a demographic heaven. Compare it to the United States and China. 44% in China, only 42% in the U.S. Iran clearly trumps both when it comes to the youth population. And and we can report they're buying things. There are iPhones in Iran. Now, despite this, Iran is the forbidden zone for American and increasingly any investors. According to the most recent round of American sanctions, they're complicated, by the way, uh, banks generally are not allowed. No bank accounts or money transfers with Iran's powerful business mafia called the Revolutionary Guards. They control about two-thirds of the economy. Also not allowed, gasoline sales or oil purchases. America can now penalize foreign suppliers of gasoline or make them choose between the United States or Iran. It's crucial because Iran imports half its gasoline. Also not allowed now, you can't even get an imp uh, imported Persian rug from Iran. That was added to sanctions this summer. But one thing is allowed. And that's oil deals, particularly related to China. Many foreign countries still buy Iranian oil. China is the most important, since experts say they are the number one buyer of Iranian oil. And oil matters more than anything to Iran, accounting for 80 percent of the nation's exports. Well, there's three of many places to know on this map as we take you through our series. We start with Tehran, the capital and site of the Tehran Stock Exchange, fourth best performing in the world this year, up 63 percent, a stunning number. Then Bushahir, a name many of you know, Iran's big nuclear power plant. They, of course, say the nuclear program is for peaceful purposes, and the world begs to differ. And then quiche. And this is a big way Iran gets what the world says it can't have. From TVs to nuclear know-how, quiche is the key to the forbidden zone. Over the next four days, we're going to take you to Quiche. We're going to introduce you to the top American official in charge of sanctions. All of that coming up on our show. We're also going to bring you Tehran's top investor and show you how American companies do business in Iran. And we'll hear from an American investor who traveled to Iran this year. Now, we begin with our trip to Iran's backdoor entry for money. We were greeted with curiosity and warmth and also with a little confusion because Americans are pretty rare in Iran. Water, white sand beaches, romantic sunsets. This island in the Persian Gulf dreams of being as popular as a Caribbean getaway. Big ambition for a small island, only 36 square miles in size, half the size of Aruba and one one hundredth the size of Puerto Rico. Andrew Burke writes for Lonely Planet Travel Guides. The Charter of the Island is a playground for the rich and famous in the 1970s. Today, it's the only beach resort in the country. The country is Iran, and the island is called Quiche. It sits just 10 miles off the Iranian coast and just a half an hour flight from Dubai. With separate beaches for women and drinking against the law, although we were invited to a party like the one George Clooney's character went to in the movie Syriana, except an entertainment is of the more wholesome sort, like the Quiche Air Show we attended. This is Iran's Hawaii. Every Iranian wants to go to Quiche. But recent crackdowns on individual liberties mean it's not really the place it used to be. Crackdowns like these women covering their hair in the hot sun. Authorities used to look the other way. Still, Quiche is a place to get away from it all for about one million Iranian tourists a year and maids and construction workers on visa runs from Dubai. Many leave the UAE to renew their visas, picking Quiche as a vacation spot. There's another side to the island, too. For nearly a thousand years, Quiche has been a center of trade for Iran. Now it has a special free trade zone status. That means no taxes on foreign businesses and no visas, even for Americans. And while Americans are extremely rare, American products are everywhere. Despite sanctions prohibiting most companies from selling to Iran, including Quiche, it's impossible to prevent some things from getting in. We saw well-known American brands in fully stocked malls, many without authorization, like this Tommy Hilfiger and the Iranian Gap. 
In fact, we saw the newest of everything, including flat screen Samsung TVs and Esprit celebrating coming to Iran. Most of the goods come from nearby Dubai. The city Iran watcher Riyad Kawaji, the founder of the Institute for Near East and Gulf Military Analysis, calls home. Kish to Iran is like Hong Kong to China. It is the place where Iran imports all the material that are subject to international sanctions. That helps explain why Kish has at least 14 malls for just 20,000 full-time residents. Many of the shoppers are traders. The Iranian coast was hazy on our visit, but men using what we were told is an up to $500 weekly allowance were en route from Kish to sell their loot at a markup on the mainland. In fact, about 15% of Iran's imports come through Kish. One reason the world's largest cargo plane was sitting on the runway. Kish officials insist investment is surging. But while the island's only five-star hotel, a 200-room Vegas meets Persepolis over-the-top edifice is humming. And its owner, Kish's richest man, Hussein Sabit, looks the mogul part. He's reeling from a blow to his pet project. Construction on the Flower of the East, a $3 billion, 5,000-room resort, is halted. The island's single biggest project ever, a victim of sanctions and the financial crisis. The abandoned lot and the dusty, empty roads around it, speaking volumes about Iran's growing isolation from the world. And joining us now is the man who created the rules for the Quiche Free Zone. Farabar's Ghadar was president to the Export Promotion Center of the Government of Iran during the Shah's reign in the 1970s. He was responsible for all non-oil exports from Iran. And he joins us now. He's a Penn State professor and scholar at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. And Fairbors, it's wonderful to see you again. And uh, we felt very fortunate to know you, given your uh, explicit link to this island. Uh, you had a lot of stories when you and I spoke on the phone that uh, when you were talking about what they did here, why they built these long runways, and what you tried to create here. Right. It's nice to be with you, Aaron. Yeah. Um, in the 70s, the Shah wanted to develop uh, both the tourist area but also a free trade zone where you would basically import things and then manufacture it and export it out and therefore there would no be taxes coming in or going out. Um, to the extent that it was manufactured in Kish and sold into the uh, mainland, then of course there would be a tax. And that was a major emphasis and push put on it. Around 1979, after the revolution, Kish was basically ignored for about a decade. But then once again, they've started to renew it and build in the Kish area. And, and as you saw, when you were there, you saw the huge airport. I mean, that airport is, uh, it handles close to eight, nine billion dollars of uh, trade per year. It was pretty amazing. I mean, you know, we went to an air show, uh, which, uh, you know, had some fun airplanes at it, but it had this uh, Antonov that we're showing everyone again here. It's hard to express to those of you watching, if you haven't seen one, how gigantic this plane is. 150 tons of cargo, Farabors, and, and yeah. these are coming and going regularly. That's right. I mean, the airport originally was uh, was built to be able to handle a Concorde, but the runway is so large that, as you can, as you saw, they could handle this huge Ukrainian, uh, you know, basically cargo ship that is the biggest in the world, and it just goes back and forth, and that explains how they get, you know, eight nine billion dollars of trade through that uh, little island of uh, you know ten by five miles. And and, and Fairbors, what's your perception, um, you know, of what of what Quiche is now? I mean, clearly from what we saw, you know, 14 malls for, for as you mm -hmm. said, 15 to 20,000 people, um, they're, they're still getting a lot of stuff that they shouldn't have. Of the pictures we showed you, everyone, uh, Gap and Tommy Hilfiger, for example, said that that would be uh, uh, not authorized, but, but Samsung freely admitted to having a company-owned store there. Sure. I mean, what happens if, if you look at it, um, uh, historically, it was set up for international tourists as well as domestic tourists, but now it's become primarily Iranians visiting Kish from the mainland, and to a certain extent, people from the Emirate and Dubai going there. Um, but eight, nine billion dollars for 20,000 people, it just doesn't compute. So therefore, what happens is the stuff goes in there, and obviously it's going to be exported to the mainland, some illegally and maybe some with permits. And if you saw the two ports that were built in Kish are actually in the northern part, facing the Iranian uh, 
and the Iranian coastline. Mm -hmm. So little ships go back and forth, uh, picking up the stuff from Kish that's imported there and basically taking it um, to Iran. And as you mentioned, there's a fee for that, and uh, I'm sure somebody collects all that fee to be able to transport the goods back to the mainland. Well, Fairbors, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And again, Fairbors got our, as we said, not just an expert on this, but actually uh, one of the people who created uh, the rules for uh, the, the, the Quiche free trade zone. By the way, everyone, even though that project was halted and a German developer as a part of it said, hey, we're not doing it anymore, um, we did see Germans and British people in the airport all saying they were pitching deals in Iran. So uh, the sanctions perhaps uh, a little bit more leaky than you might think. We spent a lot of times with taxi drivers, tourists, hotel managers while we were in Iran, even bartenders who complained they couldn't remember how to make cosmopolitans anymore. Uh, we weren't able to put any on camera, but they all spoke to us about sanctions, freedom, and nukes. And we wanted to show you something that really hit home to us. This is Iran's 50,000 rial note. 50,000 rials is about $5. It was the most common bill that we saw in Iran. And uh, we just wanted to show you what's on it. And we'll zoom in. And there you see it. That would be a nuclear symbol. And from what we experienced, Iranians like America. They all had English Farsi dictionaries. They were very friendly. And getting nuclear weapons wasn't necessarily an anti-American thing. Frankly, they seemed a little confused on that. It was more of a nationalistic thing. And the desire to get nuclear power and possibly more isn't keeping all investors out of Iran. Money speaks as loud or louder than politics to many. So here's our poll of the day. Please vote. First, do you think that sanctions are a good way to stop a country from doing something? Yes or no? Streetsigns.cnbc.com is where we hope you'll vote as well as uh, go ahead and discuss with each other our series and send us your emails as well. We're going to share them with you. And tomorrow we sit down exclusively with the man in charge of enforcing American sanctions, Treasury Undersecretary Story Levin. He's visited 24 countries since June. There he is testifying in front of Congress last week, and he will be our guest exclusively tomorrow. All right, next on the show, the Iran trade, how you can put your money to work in the region, betting for or against the Islamic Republic. We'll be right back.